Greetings from Potash Beach, Alabama. It is so good to be coming to you live tonight. Uh, it is so good to see what God is doing and how he's moving. It's cool outside, but hey, change is coming. <laughs> if you got the Bibles and would read it with us tonight, open with us to the book of Romans. We're going to continue our Bible study. Romans chapter 12. We're going to begin with verse number three. We talked last week about I uh, submit myself to God, but first three here, Paul begins, and he says, For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, uh, according as God hath dealt to every man the me measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. So we, being many of one body in Christ, and every one members one of another, having these having then gifts different according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Of ministry, let us read on ministry uh, uh, of ministry, or uh, he that teacheth on teaching, or uh, he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, that he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Paul is saying here, you know, he's, he's dealing with people and he says, you know, we ought not to show ourselves, we ought not to think of ourselves as more highly than what we ought to. You know, pride many times has a way of getting into a person's heart and into a person's mind if they are not careful and they allow it to happen. But we must walk with a simplicity of mind knowing that we are all one body. This is what Paul is saying. Hey, if you're part of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we're going to begin with verse 12. And Paul is going into some detail here about being one body. And yet many members. You see, we're all, we, all of us make up the body of Christ that are saved. We make up the body of Christ. Christ is the head. We are the many members, the different parts. Paul is talking and says, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are, all, are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jew or Gentile, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member. I understand that. The body is not one member, but many members. Many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Of course not. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Of course it's not. That's not make it so. Verse 17. If the whole body, now listen to this, if the whole body were an eye, where were the human? 
if the hope for hearing will for the smelling. But now has God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased Him. If we were all one eye, where would we hear that? See, the body's got many different members. I mean, we got two eyes, we got an ear, we got a nose, we got ten fingers, got a hand, got feet, arms, legs. Our body has many, as in the natural, has many members. Even so, in the spiritual, in the church, our bodies, the body of Christ, is made up of many members. And Paul is saying back in verse 3 of Romans that we should not think more highly of ourselves because of our gift of our calling. See, I hear people go around today and say, well, I'm apostle, so-and-so. Or I'm prophet. So and so. Lifting themselves up, listen to me. If anyone is a, an apostle, if anyone is a prophet, they ain't gonna have to tell anybody. It'll be made known. It'll come to pass. They, it, people will know. They ain't gotta go out and stand alone. Hey, I'm an apostle! Or hey, I'm a prophet. No, they ain't gotta do that. They ain't gotta carry around a special cane signifying their authority. But too often people do. But God has placed each member as it has pleased Him. See, we all are different in the body. Verse 19, And if they were all one member, will were the body. If we were all, if we were all one arm, where would my body be? If we were all one hand. You see, you just see in one of my members right now. I hope I, I try to do this camera right. You just see in one member right now of my hand with my fingers. You're not seeing all of me. Now if I come back, you see more of me. And if I had the camera right, you could see all of me from head to foot. Because see, I have many members that make up my body. Even so, with the body of Christ, there are many members. Each one has been gifted. Each one has been talented. But if we were all one member, where would the body be at? I mean, could you just see in life one person running to and fro? Verse 20, but now are the many members yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of ye, thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of thee. Can you imagine? Nay, much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble or necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honourable upon these, these we bestow more abundant honour, and our uncommonly parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honour to the to that part which lacketh, that though these there should be no schism or division in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Listen, verse 26, And whether one member suffer, all the, all the members suffer with the or the member is honor. All the members rejoice with it. We must understand and realize that we are, even though we are one body, we are many member, members and together we make up the body of Christ. We must get away from the idea that, you know, which one is better than the other because it has got too many that try to uphold themselves and look at themselves and 
say that this, I'm better than so and so, or I'm higher than so and so. No, that's not what it's about. We must realize that we are all working together. We may not all have a pulpit ministry, but we are all called to minister or to serve, as the world means. We're all called to help one another. We are, we may not all have a sing, beautiful singing voice like my wife does, but oh, and she can sing. I can't sing. That's not my gift. But that doesn't mean she's more important than me. No, that's the fact that I'm a preacher. I mean, I'm more important than her. We'll all come together and fit one to another. God is looking for men and women who are not trying to be high-minded and think of themselves more highly than others. But we need to realize we are there for one another, supporting one another. First Peter chapter 4 verse 10. Paul, uh, Peter speaking, said, And every man hath received the gift. Even so minister the same one to another. As God uh, is good stewards of the manifold grace of God. We we'll call the minister one another. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister or serve, let him do it as of the ability which God give us. Here's the key. Here is the key that no man may be glorified. First, it, it says that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Everything that you and I are doing should be for the glory and the honor of God. We're not doing it to, to try to receive some vain glory, but it ought to all be pointing people to Jesus. This is what Paul was saying in Romans chapter 12. There, we ought to be having love one for another, not trying to say I'm better than you or I'm more important than you know. But we are all together, all come together. If you have if you have a pain in one of your members, it hurts and one of your physical body members, it hurts all over. The same with this body of Christ. When one member hurts or suffers, we all born for. Friends, I'm going to encourage you today. Let's not think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. But let us be the men, the women that God called us to be. To walk in holiness and purity. And God will help us. Father, I thank you for the word. I thank you for the word is anointed. Father, I ask that God you would help each one of us. To walk according to thy word. Father, that we would be the men and the women you would call us to be. Father, that we would not be high-minded and think that we're something special or above anyone else. But Father, we would realize that we each have a gift and we each have something to contribute to this call that you've given us. Father, we each have a part of the body of Christ. And Father, help us to remember that, Lord, it's not about I'm more important than you, or Lord, no more important, that's not it. But Father, we're all important, and we are all important to you. Father, we give you praise for all you're doing. Now, Father, I ask this great forth thy hand, heal, deliver, set free, minister by thy divine power. Father, if there be any sick that are hearing my voice, uh, I ask you to reach down and touch. Uh, let healing flow uh, by the authority of the blood of the Lamb. I thank you for all things, Father. We give you praise for all things right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Friend, you are special to God, whether you think anybody else thinks you are or not. And he has a gift for you. Find that gift by getting to him in prayer and by Bible study. Everyone of us has been gifted a gift. 
I want to encourage you to can sell this message with someone that it may encourage them. If we may pray with you, send us a message. We would be more than happy to pray with you. We love you. We believe that there is a God that still heals and answers prayer. May God richly bless you. Here's our prayer. Have a good week.